let's go ahead and jump into this because time is of the essence. 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 Ready? Are you ready? Are you like, are you excited? Are you tired? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Tech Tuesday. My name is Ben, and this is Other Ben. Other. I'm now going to have to write that. I'm going to have to write yeah. Other Ben. It's going to pop up right there. Other. Hi, everyone. It's Ben and Tim. We're back again for another episode of Tech Tuesday, and we do this for the people. The people. Okay. I know you're working. I know you're getting set up for today. I know it's been a long day. Never. It's never been a long day around here. No. Just very fast. Um, so we are jumping back in, picking up with Tech Tuesdays, because one, we know how important they are and how helpful they are to the customer, but also because we've been trying to get a lot done over the past couple of weeks preparing for SEMA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been, uh, shoot, it's been wild. Actually, I stayed behind. I didn't even go to SEMA. There's no way I could get away from they my saw. Desk. We did, actually. We shot... Tech Tuesday episode ten at SEMA, technically. Oh yeah. So yeah, technically yeah. this is episode eleven. Episode eleven. Mm -hmm. Almost as many as the fast franchise. Nice. Look at that. No, but what I mean is we have um it with this being episode eleven, you can go back and check the live uh video out. Mm -hmm. Um one thing I'm enjoying is that I'm gonna be able to go back and edit this video instead of having to do it live. And also I know the camera quality will be better because I'm not having to use some random hotspot in the middle of a thousand, thousand, thousand foot square foot building. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. I mean, don't don't trying to live stream something from the middle of a convention center with three bars, two bars of a hotspot is not good. Come to oh, find yeah. out. I, I didn't realize that was going to be as big of a deal as it was. But yeah. it, you live and you learn, I guess. Anyway. Yeah, it's. I, I would say that was a real real adventure all the way around the oh block. Oh, my gosh. Just trying to do that and still got SEMA. I mean, like, how many people almost walked between the camera and you guys? Actually, that was okay. Though we did have some guy come up to us with a huge freaking camera and was, like, just recording us record ourselves. It was really weird. That's creepy. But like, you know, like the TV style camera, it wasn't like somebody took their little iPhone or whatever. It was like their whole, like, so it was TV. like a red or something. It was like 40 yeah. grand. Yeah. So somewhere, somewhere out there is some video of Daniel and I recording Tech Tuesday recorded by somebody else. You know, that dude that, that had the camera, he was like, one day there was a decision. I could buy this Cayenne S whatever or I could buy this, you know, camera. Mm -hmm. And he bought the camera. Mm hmm. I wouldn't have got the camera. Yeah. No, no. I no, I wouldn't. Either. Anyway, I don't. It is what it is. We're back. Mm. Episode 11, Tech Tuesday. You ready to jump into this? Yeah, let's read a thing. You want to read a thing? You want me to read a thing? I let's love see. reading things. I don't know if I love reading things, but I guess here's, I'm, I'm here, supposed to love reading things. Here's right? some low-hanging fruit right here from Jed <clears throat> Sunder 7782. Mm -hmm. Does a kill shot have timing control? Yep, it does. It has a built-in driver for that so it has a built-in coil driver it's igbt high current high voltage mm -hmm. uh transistors and whatnot so if you got an rpm signal the the ecm is constantly trying to manipulate timing so if we're if you're driving a coil off of our computer um yeah it's going to adjust accordingly yeah absolutely the easiest thing that i recommend to most customers looking to get our systems is to get a master kit if it exists and the reason being is think of it like a master kit covers all of your bases. You don't have to worry about your fuel delivery system. You don't have to worry about ignition system. Literally everything that you need to switch over to EFI, if we offer it in a master kit, then you're good to go. Um, also, on top of that, a good thing to keep in mind is that it is the most affordable EFI system in mm -hmm. the market. So you can get a full um, EFI kit um, EFI system, throttle body, harness, etc., with your ignition system, distributor, and coil, and your full fuel delivery system, pump, regulator, lines, connections, all for about the same price you can get a standard base kit anywhere else. That's so true. Uh, if you really piece together other systems out there, it starts getting spendy. Yep. 
because you know you buy our top end kit was it just a tick over a thousand bucks or something like that sticker that's not even what it is right now yeah we got sales. crazy sales going on as well yeah. Uh, but yeah uh, by the time you get the base model of another brand you're gonna you know I think the last one I purchased, I was uh, pretty close to 13-something, yeah. and I wasn't using time and control. That was just to bolt it on the top. Yeah. The same thing we offer for 800, but we also have you know, GPS handheld and a bunch of other add-ons. Yep. And then another $200, you got time and control, yep. the distributor and coil. Yep. We already have the driver built in. Yep. Essentially, so. think of it as buy a master kit for the same price you buy a regular kit anywhere else, and you get everything. So let's see here. Um, what's a good one? Does it have that? Does it do this? Thanks for answering questions, Dave Turner. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> um, this one, Gateway Automotive uh, 5789, also yeah. known as Rusty from Indianapolis. Um, does Aces make a system that I can run on my 13B? I am looking into that. We got a couple rotary fans out there in the world. I, my myself, I own two FCs and an FD, mm. so I'm a 13B kind of guy. So that gives me really good uh, reason to research it up and try to use our kill shot reduces wild and figure out the ignition strategy on that to make it work really good and try to have some kind of rudimentary time and control with that. But yeah, that's the thing. We just really, if you can get tag signal on there, you can strap it on top and adjust the parameters and do a pretty sweet tune on the thing. There is a few out there floating around that is running it, but they're using, you know, like an ignition box to pick up the signal to filter it out and using the tack output from that to drive our system. So mm -hmm. it, it is a thing. Yeah. I'm, I gotta be honest. I had no idea where you're going with that. Right yeah. The yeah, gate. yeah. This, I realize it's, it's moments like these where I realize that you're the technician. Kinda. And I'm not the technician. Uh, dude, I guess at this stuff. I just happen to be really good at guessing. Yeah, you just you're pulling it out of the air, it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's cool. That's where the best stuff's invented. I think the your motto moving forward, like just in general, is like it'll work. I mean, in theory, it'll work. Anything can work. <laughs> <laughs> like I think that's another thing that I admire about you so much is that you is the fact that while everybody has all these crazy setups right yeah you and i mean crazy uh, there's I, some wild some stuff wild i hear stuff about that you see every <laughs> single day but the fact that you can make it work we don't advertise that it can work we don't guarantee that it'll work we don't promise it'll work but somehow you make it work i good job good job Tim. oh thank you I'll thank you, you. everyone give tim a round of applause <laughs> yeah. yeah but a lot of that <laughs> will it work stuff comes from i have customers that have modified our systems to do mm. some very remarkable things mm -hmm. um and run very well on things yeah. that it's not designed to run on they just yeah. look at it and be like oh it needs this much signal with this reluctor and yeah. poof it happens did you um, see that one guy built the turbo with a with a kill shot uh, where they are not obviously you can put I know a turbo on a kill shot i know but four like, people that's done that really the yeah. one the one i think daniel sent it to me while we were at sema i think you might have sent it to him I can't remember. Was it the? It was a huge turbo. I was just expecting a Royal Flush to be. Was it the guy on the cool truck. old truck? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can't remember that cat's name. I've talked to him a few times. That was so cool. But yeah, that's that's the but thing I is didn't like, even expect you to do that with a kill shot. I thought that was oh, more of a dude, Royal Flush wait, thing. Wait till I, wait till I decide to uh, oh, sell Lord. you guys one of my turbo kits. No lord. Oh yeah, I got a few turbo kits laying around. I want to put one on the shop truck. Really? Oh, why not? C10 turbo. C10. That thing is gone seven. from a black kill shot mm -hmm. to a gold kill shot mm -hmm. to a polished royal flush. Yeah. And is that still what's out there? Yeah. Or yeah. Did we change it again? Well, you see, what had happened was um, <laughs> I was out there testing the launch control in the parking lot. and No. And, I, and then I uh, parked it, and um, I, I got the attention Damn. of the police. So... But I didn't leave the parking lot. It'll be fine, dude. There's, I didn't get a ticket. Did he come over? Oh, no. He uh, he sat there and stared dead at me the whole time. Just waiting. I mean, he was setting in drive at the end of the parking lot at the church parking lot. Mm. Just to chilling. Because I'm out there up on the launch control making all this racket in the parking right. lot at like 7 o'clock at night. Oh, so, that's lovely. Yeah, well, I was trying to get it just dialed in to where oh I'm right at the gosh. edge of the converter of how much I could foot brake it, because I got I got plans for the truck. So, anywho, don't do that. 
If you're testing your launch control, don't do it next to the Burger King, apparently. Or anywhere where or, there's cops. Well, anywhere where there's police. There's probably police officers there's some kind watching of, this. Oh, yeah. There's some kind of message I'm supposed to be <laughs> promoting in a positive way about do the right thing. and don't we are. be like We're hot rod people, Exactly. Man. During well, yeah, last. there's that one. But this one right here, uh, with, the f- f- uh, with the kill shot, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. can't floor it. It's bogging down. Is there any settings I can change? Yeah, we didn't. A couple we, things. We purposely didn't really hit on that one because we weren't technicians. Yeah. <laughs> Why? So you can't floor it. So you got a kill shot doing a thing. Um, mm-hmm. You're looking for the values of uh, acceleration correction versus TPS. Think of it like a digital pump shot for a carburetor. Mm-hmm. It's under fuel and I think advanced. And then there's a little little one D table. Mm-hmm. You just, you know, the more you bring that up, the more fuel it puts in. Whenever it sees that rate of change for the TPS or delta, yep. some people like to call it. But yeah, acceleration correction versus TPS, throw some in there. If you have the tuning software, you can also go into your VE table and throw some fuel in the top of the map to help offset that by not having too much fuel in acceleration correction, but not also not having too much fuel at the top of the fuel map. So you can kind of balance it out. Uh, really, really neat thing that I like to do there. Um, have you ever seen the movie Space Chimps? No. There's, there's a line in there that... I often think about when I listen to you talk. Oh, yeah? There's a line that goes, the only word I understood was the. Ah. And I always, a lot of times when (laughs) you try to explain something in pure tech fashion, pure um, aeronautic, whatever, engineer fashion, and I just go, the only word I understood was the. I followed you there at the beginning, and then after a bit of, Stuff in there, top of the map, fuel tables, advanced tuning software, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Well, after this, young man, I'm going to explain to you oh, um, inertial supercharging. Okay. Yeah. Inertial supercharging? Yeah. Or what's that other video where we're like, where it's like... Oh, the turbo the and compa- cabinator? Turbo- yeah. Well, that's, that's all made up. That's hilarious. But the inertial supercharging is a really neat mm. uh, thing. So... Cool. Oof, I don't want to dive into it because that will no, be another Tim no, tangent. No. Tim tangents. <laughs> oh For more gosh. information, click here. Um, that'll be a thing. I think it'll be a thing. I may go on these tangents, and he'll make a separate video about the whole thing. So we'll see what happens with that. Don't do it now. I'm. Don't do it now. Okay, I wanted to ask you specifically about this. Matt this Henderson, one? yeah. We talked. We tried to get into it a little bit in the last Tech Tuesday, uh-huh. but I just wanted to ask for clarification as well. Matt Henderson asks, will you guys eventually have a tune repository to upload and download custom tunes to and from? Now, Daniel said no, and I think we're probably leaning more in that direction. However, I know I've talked to you about this as well, so I just wanted to see what you thought about it. Well, here's the thing that if we do something like a tune repository that oh my god a train you hear the train and it was all professional too it, oh. really, it was so, all set up no it's all good so any hoozles i'm leaving that in it, I'm not, any I'm any not hoozles or the hoozles or the train the train both. Uh, so, will you guys make a tune repository, upload and download custom tunes, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Uh, everybody says no. I say probably. But if we do that, there will be a little disclaimer with it, understanding that you are uploading or you're downloading somebody else's tune right. that may have deficiencies that's, that's not correct for your motor. See, that's what I thought. So that's we'd... that's the thing. Right. We got to keep ourselves away from the liability of it, but we also want to have the freedom of speech of that. When it comes to a tuner that makes dynamite tunes and loves to share them, I've got a 383 mm-hmm. with a hot cam and flowy heads and yep. this nice exhaust and this trans running on whatever. Yep. And you know, some of these people they're going to make a really nice tune, dial it down a little bit for people to share to have mm-hmm. a good bass tune. But whether we make a tune report repository or not, somebody will create it out there. Um, I would rather you know we kind of have a little bit more grasp on that because. You know, as I make really good tunes, I want to put them out there. If I got one that's just perfect for a small block and it's very safe, I'd love mm-hmm. to just share it because a lot of these things that I deal with is tuning related. So mm-hmm. if I have something that I can you email should. you, you up through, through your handheld and fire the thing up, similar engine than I got, similar timing profile you're using, whatever, yeah. then poof, you already got a really, really, really dialed in tune from somebody that does this stuff every single day. Mm-hmm. 
Last one with uh, Billy Minton. Um, this one's from Billy Minton. Again. <laughs> no, um, Billy Minton. Yeah, uh, this is the last one. On deceleration, AFR readings go as high as 48. Mm -hmm. Where should I go to adjust this? Yep. Nowhere. This is deceleration fuel cutoff, also known as DEFCO. Mm -hmm. um, that's just so it doesn't send a whole bunch of extra raw fuel down the pipe while you're decelerating. Yep. That's the, it gets rid of a lot of the pops and bangs. Um, so yep. I wouldn't worry about it. Yep. You really only need that turned off if you got like a track car. It's not doing anything because you notice the, the throttle, the TPS will go to its op uh, closed position. Yep. Uh, it'll go into open loop so the O2 sensor is not affected and the fuel table isn't learning. Mm. And it'll go kind of lean. So that's, that's deceleration fuel cutoff. That's the whole strategy. Nothing bad. Nice job, Tim. Nice job, Ben. Or other Ben, as you said. Other Ben. Today. <clears throat> cool. Um, I was going to make this like a shorter Tech Tuesday because we're just getting back into the swing of things, but here we are. Yeah. Probably like right around the normal time. About half hour into it, yeah. yeah. It'll get chopped up and edited and all that stuff. And I wonder who does all that. You. Yes, I know. Yeah. You don't want me to do it. <laughs> well, you do have a YouTube channel. Yeah, but I don't edit it. I leave everything in it. <clears throat> everything stays in there. When the camera stays on to when it goes off, uh, the only thing I've, I've cut out of there is um, dropping my phone and bathroom breaks. That's about it. Touche. All right, everyone. Thank you very much, so much for watching. Um, another episode of Tech Tuesday, episode 11. Um, super awesome, super great to be back. Um, if you have any questions about EFI or ACES, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Or if you see any Tech Tuesday media anywhere else on social media, feel free to give it some love. And if you like the video, please feel free as well to like it. Um, and we will be back at you again next week as we continue to roll on with Tech Tuesday. Thank you again so much for watching. Thank you. We'll see you later.